Good evening and welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Josh and I'll be facilitating our panel this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. I wanna draw your attention to the Q&A button on your screen. Um, that's the question and answer feature. You can use that to ask questions of our presenters at any time during the presentation. It doesn't have to only be during their presentation, but they can answer you um, while other universities are talking as well. Any question is open, um, fair game for you. Ask questions about specific colleges, about the application process, really anything about college admission is fair game. Your microphone and your camera are both turned off so the panelists won't be able to see or hear you. The only way you have to interact with us is through the Q&A feature. Um, also, this is just one of many different sessions that's happening as part of this college fair series. So be sure to sign up for some additional sessions um, coming up in the next couple of months. Um, and the presentation that you're about to hear, as well as all of the others, are being recorded. So you'll be able to find them online as well. Um, in about a week, you'll find them at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. That's also where you can register for future events. So um, I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. And first, we'll be hearing from uh, Danielle Castro from the University of South Florida. Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Danielle Castro, and I am here with the University of South Florida. Um, I'm glad you guys are able to attend. So I will be going over a little bit of information regarding um, USF itself, a bit about the institution and our application process. So I'll jump right in. Um, University of South Florida was founded in 1956. Um, so we are a rather young university compared to some of our other larger institutions within the state. However, within that short amount of time, we have grown so quickly. Um, right now, our total enrollment across all three locations is just over 50,000 students, with about 37,000 of those students being our undergraduate population. Um, so we do have quite a few students that will come back with us for their graduate programs, whether it's graduate certificates, master's programs, or doctoral programs. And you did hear me correct, we do have three locations within Florida. Um, the largest campus is going to be the Tampa campus. We also have a middle-sized one in St. Petersburg. And our smallest one, which is more of a community college-sized feel, is going to be our Sarasota Manatee campus. Um, we do have over 200 plus programs for our students to be able to major and concentrate in. Um, and some of our uh, campuses will even specialize in some of them. So for instance, a lot of our students that are looking at the STEM area, more than likely the majority of your classes would be at our Tampa campus, um, as we do have a majority of facilities available for the research and uh, internship portions that you guys are able to utilize. One example is just the fact that we have three hospitals right on our main campus at Tampa, which is going to be the um, Moffitt Cancer Center, the Shriners Children's Hospital, and our Veterans Hospital. Um, so again, great opportunities. Um, however, as I mentioned, while those are some of our really cool internship opportunities and research opportunities, we actually do have research and internships available for every single major and minor that we offer. So you guys are able to participate in that as early as freshman year. And that really helps out a lot of our students with their professional networking and getting ready for life after college, whether it's continuing education or their job. Um, we really do pride ourselves as well, not just in the diverse amount of programs that we offer our students, but the diversity that we have among our population on campus with our staff, faculty, and students. Um, just our student population alone, we have about 41.5% diverse backgrounds. Um, and we do pride ourselves in having all 50 states, all US territories, and over 140 countries represented right at our main campus and at all locations. So it doesn't take a trip abroad or across state lines to be able to culturally immerse yourself. You'll be able to meet a lot of different people from a lot of different um, areas within the US and again globally. So it really does open the opportunities and maybe even just um, mindsets for our students about all the different places they get to learn about, all the different types of people that they'll get interact with, interaction with, which is pretty neat. 
Um, now, again, we are a large institution, but we do try and keep the one-on-one um, -on -one ratio with our students and faculty on the smaller end so that they still do feel like they are having that individualized attention when they do need help. Um, so for instance, our students to faculty ratio is about 21 students to one professor and an average class size is about 33 students. So again, just make, making sure that we are keeping that personalized touch. We do have over 700 clubs and organizations on campus. They range everything from academic and honors, um, intramural, intramural sports. Uh, we even have things like Greek life, so sorority and fraternity life. We also have even a basket weaving and a chocolate lovers club. So pretty much anything that you can imagine, we do offer. However, if there is a hobby or interest that we do not currently have on campus in the form of an organization, it's very easy to start a new club or organization. Um, so that's just a little bit about campus life. We do have a lot of things in the immediate area that students can get involved with. We're only 45 minutes from one of the nation's top rated beaches. Um, we do have 17 NCAA Division I sports teams, and the students do have free tickets to all of those games, including our football team, which plays at the NFL Tampa Bay Buccaneer Stadium. So that's a really cool experience for a lot of our students. Um, we also have the Museum of Science and Industry across the street from us and Bush Gardens, which is a theme park just five minutes down the road. Now, this is just a little bit of information regarding our application process. One important point that I do want to make sure our students are aware is that we did push our deadlines back. So for scholarship consideration for our out-of-state students, the final completion of your application will be April 15th. And again, that is for consideration for admissions and scholarships. So you just need to make sure that if you've taken any tests between the fall all the way through March, that everything, including your official test scores, official high school transcripts, and your application fee are paid and complete your application by April 15th. Um, on the screen, I do have a few tiers of scholarships. We do offer scholarships to our out-of-state students. Please keep in mind that because we are part of the state university system for the state of Florida, we are governed by the Florida Board of Governors to require official ACT and or SAT tests. However, we do super score. So if you've taken it multiple times or you're planning to take it again within this month of March, please do so and please make sure that you send all of those in because we're gonna be looking at your highest components or highest achieved components um, in each of the categories for the tests. Um, and again, for the scores, or I'm sorry, for the scholarships, um, you will only need to meet the GPA and one of the test scores. You will not need both. Um, with that, I will go ahead and wrap up and pass it back on over to our moderator. Great, thank you so much. And next we have Christopher Rogers from Nova Southeastern University. Hi everyone, my name is Christopher Rogers. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Nova Southeastern University, which is located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, and we are a private selective research university. Um, we have about 5,600 undergraduate students. Uh, the average class size is 17 students per class, which is a blessing and a curse. A uh, blessing because you get the opportunity to get to know your professors. Um, a curse, if you were to say skip a class, you're going to get a text from one of your professors asking where you were. Um, in terms of diversity on campus, we have students represented from all 50 states, as well as students represented in 100 different countries throughout the world. This next part um, about NSU is my favorite aspect of the university. It's called our Excel program. It's designed to get you outside of the classroom and get you firsthand experience in your field. Um, every university wants that for their students. Here at NSU, it's a requirement to graduate. Um, so in order to graduate, you have to collect what we call units of Excel. Um, and you do that through the three categories you see on your screen. So the first one is study abroad and travel study. Study abroad is um, you know, a full 16 weeks, a full semester in another country, whereas travel study is very specific to your major. So it's a couple weeks um, in another country. Marine biology students have gone to the Galapagos Islands, work with endangered species. Our medical students um, will go on mission trips in different parts all over the world. So cool opportunities there. Uh, the next opportunity is career development. It's basically internships and shadowing opportunities. And there's a lot of really cool opportunities without actually having to leave campus uh, at MSU. Um, we have an ER on campus. We have a hospital that's being built that's gonna be up and running in 2021. We have a kindergarten through 12th grade private school. 
for education majors. Um, we have the opportunity to start your own businesses on campus, on campus. So some really cool opportunities. The Miami Dolphins are located on campus. So uh, physical therapy students get the opportunity to shadow the trainers there. You can get into the business side of the NFL team as well. So really cool opportunities. And then we are a research university. So we're doing research in just about every field. Um, so there's going to be plenty of opportunities there as well. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is what we call our premier programs. Um, the first one I'll discuss is called our Razor's Edge Scholarship Program. There's five different tracks for that. Um, it's a residential scholarship, so you're going to be living on campus for all four years. There's a bunch of co-curricular activities involved with that as well. Um, and the five different tracks are down there on the bottom of your screen. It comes with a $24,000 scholarship. Dual admission is the next program, so you have the opportunity to apply to one of our graduate school programs for the opportunity to preserve your seat. Um, it's a great way to get into some of our graduate school programs that are really competitive. For example, our med school gets about 10,000 applicants each year. Um, when you apply through dual admission, you're not competing with those 10,000 applicants. You're competing with incoming freshmen. If you are offered a spot in that program, you're just competing with yourself and making sure you hit uh, minimum requirements, whereas other students who are going to be applying after they receive their bachelor's degree are going to need to get the highest possible MCAT score, or the highest possible GPA, uh, because it is so competitive. The next program is called the Fischler Academy. It's an ex accelerated program for education majors. You get your bachelor's in three years, your master's in the fourth, um, and then it comes with a guaranteed teaching job in the state of Florida after graduation, and this program comes with a $20,000 scholarship. The next program is for business majors called the Heisinga Business Innovation Academy. Um, another accelerated program, so you get your bachelor's and your master's in business in just uh, four years. Um, and upon graduation, you can actually pitch a business idea to NSU for the opportunity to get up to $20,000 in startup funds for your business. If you're interested in applying, first you'd have to apply to the university. Then you'd submit another application called our Premier Programs application, and then you'd attend one of our Shark Preview Weekends, which basically, if you can get down to Florida, we'll pick you up from the airport. You're going to be staying in one of the residence halls on campus. Uh, meals are provided. You're going to interview for your programs, but it's just a great way to see uh, campus through the eyes of a student. Uh, these are the two residence halls we offer for freshmen. We have your traditional residence hall, which you see up there on top, called Leo Goodwin. So three students per room. Uh, one bathroom shared amongst the room, and then we have a suite style uh, set up called uh, the Commons. Uh, the cool thing about NSU, no uh, communal bathrooms. You're never going to be sharing a bathroom with an entire floor of students. Um, in terms of where we're located, we're located um, just 10 minutes outside of downtown Fort Lauderdale and Fort Lauderdale Beach, which you see pictured there on your screen. Um, if you don't have a car on campus, we have shuttles that take you to and from campus to the beach to downtown Fort Lauderdale so you get to enjoy some of the cool parts of uh, living in, in South Florida. So these are the scholarships we offer. Um, the Dean Scholarship is given to all students that are admitted to the university. It's anywhere from five to $19,000. The Razor's Edge Scholarships um, have actually gone up. It's $24,000. And then the Fischler Academy and Heisinger Business Innovation Academy that we discussed earlier are both $20,000 scholarships. Um, if you are interested in applying, um, we accept the common application. We also have our own application on our website. Um, we'll need your official high school transcripts. We were test optional this year. We're not 100% sure um, what we're going to be doing um, next year with everything that's been going on with COVID, um, but we will be updating that soon. We accept up to three different letters of recommendation and an optional essay. Uh, so that's it for me. Um, if you have any questions moving forward, all my contact information is right there and you can go ahead and uh, reach out to me. Great, thank you so much. And our next panelist is Diana Trim from the University of Tampa. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you and your presentation looks great. Okay, thank you. 
Um, my name is Diana Shrem, and I'm one of the admissions counselors for the University of Tampa, located in downtown Tampa, Florida. Uh, we're a private, independent liberal arts university. We have approximately 9,600 students, mostly undergrad, only about 1,000 graduate students. Uh, we are NCAA Division II for athletics, members of the uh, Sunshine State Conference, and we have over 300 uh, clubs and organizations. 70% of our students do come from out of state, about 20% in state. Uh, we have over 200 different areas of study and all of our majors are divided into four colleges. We have our College of Arts and Letters with all of the fine and performing arts uh, programs, uh, humanities, film and media, and uh, many others. We also have our uh, Sykes College of Business, which is highly ranked with eight concentrations in business and seven in international business. This is also where our cybersecurity major is. We have our College of Natural and Health Sciences with all of the science majors, including an accredited forensic science program, number one nursing program in the state of Florida with 100% passing rate on the national exam in seven of the last eight years. Um, also, we have a marine science program with a concentration in with a major in biology and a major in chemistry. Um, then there is our College of uh, Social Sciences, Mathematics and Education with all of the different social science majors, as well as criminology, criminal justice. And if you're interested in uh, teaching, we have both secondary and elementary education uh, majors. Class sizes are small. All of the classes are taught by the professors. It's a one to 17 faculty to student ratio. And their average class size is approximately 22 students in a class. Our students do have opportunities to do research at the undergraduate level. Uh, the college has a focus on experiential learning. So many of the facilities are designed to provide students with the opportunities to apply their knowledge. Uh, if you're interested in study abroad, we have study abroad in 60 different countries. Um, and there are many different formats as well, travel courses or semester or year abroad, as well as a, a semester at sea where students take all of their classes uh, aboard a cruise ship. And all students are encouraged to do at least one internship. Uh, we have uh, on average uh, a thousand uh, internship opportunities annually. The University of Tampa is a great place to live as well as to learn. Approximately 62% of our students do choose to live on campus. They don't have to, um, but it's just so much to do and organizations and clubs. And so um, that living on campus provides students with uh, better opportunities to get involved. So uh, probably around 90% of our first year students choose to live on uh, campus. Cost of attendance for uh, tuition and fees uh, is $30,884. That includes uh, fall semester and spring semester for full-time tuition. Uh, and then room and board is approximately 11,500. And that is a double occupancy uh, room and a meal plan, 15 meals per week. And then there are other options. So that could be um, more or it could be less. And all of those prices are listed on our website. You can get a breakdown. So uh, approximately 42,000 uh, dollars per year, but our students typically do not pay that price. About 97% of our students do receive uh, some form of uh, financial aid, whether it be merit-based uh, scholarships or uh, need-based scholarships and grants. 
all students when um, accepted for admissions, their merit scholarships are calculated at that time. So for freshman uh, scholarships, $4,000 to $18,000 uh, per year. There's also an additional $1,000 per year for uh, students who have an IB diploma. Uh, then for transfer students is $6,000 to $9,000 per year. There's also an extra uh, $2,000 uh, dollars for students who um, uh, are members of Phi Theta Kappa and six to $12,000 uh, for um, international students. If you're interested in applying, we do rolling admissions. We accept common application as well as the coalition application and we have our own application on our website. Uh, you, we are test optional. You just need to submit an official high school transcript, essay, and one letter of recommendation from a teacher or a counselor. So my time is up, so I'm going to end. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask me your questions. And all of my contact information and other admissions counselors' information at the University of Tampa is on our website under admissions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Kiani Greer from Kennesaw State. Awesome, phenomenal. Let me get this going. Share my screen. So, uh, I'm going to move this here. Awesome. Can you guys see my screen just fine? Yeah, it says future owls. Okay, phenomenal. Okay, we can get rolling. Oh, let me get this out of the way for y'all. Sorry about that. Let me go to start my time. Okay, great. So welcome everybody. My name is Keanu Greer, um, graduate of Kennesaw State University, class 2018, majored in public relations, really enjoyed my time at the university. Um, to talk a little bit about KSU, you might not know where we're at. We're at Metro Atlanta School, so about 20 minutes north of the city of Atlanta, 30 minutes, 35, 45 minutes in traffic. You know, Atlanta, it's known for its traffic, but it really is, you know, a, a pretty smooth drive. If you ask me, I make that drive every day. I live in Atlanta myself. Um, KSU as a whole has around 41,000 students. When I was a freshman back in 2014, we were probably at around 25,000. We are the second largest institution in the state of Georgia. Uh, now that's behind Georgia State, who if you, you know about Georgia State has a, a ton of perimeter campuses here in the state of Georgia and around Atlanta. So the fact that we are so big and we, we, the fact that we've grown so much in the last couple of years is a big deal to us. So we're proud to you know recruit that number, but also, uh, have that that number of students on campus. Now, with that big number, you're not going to feel like a number. I think that's really important. I visited big schools, bigger schools than what KSU is um, and was at the time, and visited small schools. Now, I am. I wanted to be able to have that experience to where I didn't want everybody to know my name when I walked around campus. Not that I'm the bee's knees and I'm the, the most or I'm the most popular guy, but I wanted um, to have that ability to navigate different groups and get to know people in case you struck that perfect balance for me. Um, I was an athlete. I played uh, college football at KSU. We have 18 division one sports football last to be added. We're a perennial contender in the FCS. We are a division one school. Um, so we like to compete. We like to have a good time. Um, it's a good, it's a good time to be an owl always. Um, we do have two metro, two metro Atlanta campuses. So we have our Kennesaw campus. If you research that and we have our Marietta campus, so the cool thing about us is that we have liberal arts majors, but we also have a host of STEM majors. And I'll talk about that in just a second. 300 plus clubs and organizations. There's something for you that ranges from um, fraternity and sorority life to intramural sports to anything in between. Um, I love, you know, art, fashion, anime. There's a club for all of that and anything else that you can honestly think about. Um, 150 degree programs ranging from undergraduate to doctoral. You can stay with us the entire time, depending on your major. 
We're top five in the nation in dining. That's no joke. I was 195 pounds when I walked on campus. I was 240 when I graduated for a very good reason <laughs> because the food was so good, um, but it was a lot of great food. We welcome students from 114 countries actually, but we study abroad in 96. So you have a lot of options when it comes to study abroad at KSU. And even with that big student number, we still keep class size at one to 21. And you'll figure out how important that small class size is once you get into those groups. You College is group work city, so you're gonna have your time to work in groups. and you know, be cohesive because that's how it is once you get to the workforce. I like to call this the out of state slide. If you're not from Georgia, the most relevant things in Atlanta are going to be us <laughs> in, in, uh, in, the, in the metro Atlanta area. Uh, we reference Home Depot HQ in downtown Atlanta to show you how close you are to uh, future career opportunities and the fact that there's a host of Fortune 500 companies based in Atlanta, but also have satellite offices in, in Atlanta. We have a host of professional sports, right? Atlanta Falcons, Atlanta United. Atlanta sports, you know, breaks my heart most days, but, you know, you work it out any way that you can. Um, and then we also, you know, reference The Walking Dead because Atlanta is huge for the film industry. If you can be an extra in a movie, we do have some classes with the Georgia Film Academy. So hop in if, you, if you're more than welcome to. Don't have a whole major. But we, do, uh, we do host some classes. Now to talk a little bit about majors, we do have education, early childhood, all, all the way up to high school, all the way up to high school, closed college of business. That's going to be economics, finance, entrepreneurship. Humanities and Social Sciences is where I got my degree. That's our School of Communication and Media, but also our School of Criminal Justice and anything ology, sociology, psychology, anthropology is gonna be hosted in there. Science and math stretches across our both campuses. Arts predominantly at our Kennesaw campus, extremely talented students at KSU, ranging from digital animation to arts, anything that you can really think of. Health and Human Services, nursing, exercise science, we got it. And then our Marietta campus offers architecture and construction management. Please do some research if you're interested in that, in that program. We're a five-year accredited program, you know, which grants you the same level and certifications as somebody that does a master's level program at a school of architecture elsewhere. Uh, computing and software engineering, most applicable field to what's going on these days. As you see, the crossover between the two campuses, but then we also have our College of Engineering and Engineering Technology. We do have a, a great, uh, uh, um, other school, I like to say, in Georgia, that, that's pretty popular for engineering and engineering technology, but we go toe to toe in terms of the students that graduate and land those big jobs out of school. To talk about admissions, we are um, pretty simple when it comes to the admissions process. All we need is your application, transcripts, SAT or ACT scores. We did go test optional this year, um, meaning if you have a 2.6 academic GPA, you will be admitted without test scores. If you have a 2.5, 2.59 to 2.5, we do require test scores. Those are just our regular admissions requirements. And you can always talk to me and ask questions about that at any point. We can run through those. Our final deadline is June 1st. So please, we got time, let me know. Transfer wise, if you're looking to transfer into KSU, you just need 30 transferable credit hours and a 2.0. And if you're dual enrolled, please send us your college level transcripts. We can talk more about dual enrollment on a later date if you ask me some questions, um, but it is extremely rigorous, but it's also very rewarding. And don't let that scare you because it, it's very rewarding at the end of your time in school. Scholarships, we have what's called an umbrella scholarship. So if you apply um, for one scholarship, you apply for them all at KSU, which is amazing. And then we have our state-based scholarships. We do have housing, which is beautiful on both the Kennesaw and Marietta campus. If you wanna catch a virtual tour, please do. And then if you want to follow us on any socials, these are all of our socials. So be more, you, you're more than welcome to follow us. So thanks guys, appreciate you. Thank you so much. And now Sarah Koloski from Sacred Heart University. Thank you, I'll just get my, all right. I'm gonna take you guys up the coast a little bit. My name is Sarah Koloski. I'm the Regional Director of Admissions for Sacred Heart University. Um, I am based in Denver, Colorado. So if you have any questions down the line, I will be your direct point of contact as I work with all students based out West. Sacred Heart is a mid-sized Catholic university. We're located in Fairfield, Connecticut, just an hour and a half outside of New York City and about two and a half hours to Boston. Yes, you will learn public transit. Yes, you will have seasons. No, you will not die. It's all great. It's all part of the experience, right? So um, we're also located in the third most concentrated area, of Fortune 500 companies. So all of our majors do require at least one internship to graduate. Um, so again, really emphasizing that student success and providing those experiential learning opportunities. 
we're sort of a hybrid of liberal arts meets career education. So while we do have most of our students coming in undecided, um, we do um, want you to kind of graduate within those four years um, and even consider some higher level opportunities as well. Of the 60 undergraduate programs that we do offer, there are 40 plus graduate, um, whether accelerated or combined graduate programs available. And we do see about 40% of our student body come back to a grad program at Sacred Heart just because they do get that priority consideration. Um, most popular majors include anything in the health professions. We are top in state, top five in New England for our direct entry nursing program, um, a doctorate of physical therapy, occupational therapy, athletic training, of which we've had um, high success rates on all of those NCLEX and board exams as well. Um, but again, um, we do have 60 other programs and they all have their own notable accolades. Um, as you can see, we are in a pivotal growth phase right now. Um, we have the top 5% of internationally accredited business schools in the world. We're top 20 in the country for performing arts with a direct connection to Broadway, um, as well as our dedication to service. While we are a Catholic institution, we did become independent from the church early on. So there are no religious requirements. You do not have to be Catholic to attend. Um, most like dedication, I would say across the board for a community is their um, commitment to service. Um, all of the clubs and activities that we do have on campus, Habitat for Humanity is our largest student run club. So again, it's just a testament to our student body and what they wanna get involved in both at the local and global level. Um, in the last seven years, we've had 13 new buildings introduced to campus. These are kind of the highlights in the last few years. Um, we just added, um, we're actually breaking ground on a new ice hockey arena, um, which is set to be completed at the end of 2022. And uh, we also added a new multicultural center on campus. So again, utilizing those resources from all different backgrounds, all different um, levels of accessibility for our student body um, and just giving them what the current student is really looking for. Um, one thing I do wanna highlight is our um, acquisition of GE's former headquarters. This is something that has been really exciting. Um, so any of my undecided engineers, you would have full access to a, an 11,000 square foot maker space, artificial intelligence labs, game design labs, drones and robotics labs. Um, the bottom right corner of that photo, you can actually see a, a hotel that is going to be renovated for the end of this year. Um, and that will be for our hospitality and resort management students. And that will be completely student run. So again, offering additional hands-on experiences for our student body um, in all different aspects as well. And you can see we've added new dining halls. We've added new dormitories. Um, we have our WSU Public Radio and Public Safety Center and our new Athletics and Rec Center. So again, really utilizing what students um, are asking for today. Um, this is an overview of our application process. Uh, we are still ap accepting applications for this year if you would like to enroll for the fall, um, but it's pretty straightforward. We are on the common application. We only ask for a transcript, transcript and letter of recommendation. We are test optional. We have been test optional for 15 years. That includes our direct entry nursing program. Um, you can see on the screen sort of the different academic requirements between the general university as well as any of our health profession programs just because they are the most competitive. Um, we will take self-reported scores, um, but big things we kind of look at if you are able to visit campus. We went um, live on campus for both semesters and we are offering limited in-person visits and I'm happy to walk through all of those COVID restrictions if you find yourself able to make your way out east for a trip. Um, but feel free to be in touch with me. I, um, again, will be your direct point of contact if you'd like to host an interview with me um, and I look forward to working with you all. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Sarah. And lastly, we have Kayla Paytak from the University of New Haven. Can you guys see my screen? Yep, we can. Okay, perfect. So hi, everyone. My name is Kayla. Um, I'm the admissions counselor for the University of New Haven. Um, Happy to be here and talk with you guys a little bit about uh, the University of New Haven and what we have to offer. But let me just click through. All right, so the first slide is a little bit about our location. So we are located in West Haven, Connecticut. Um, personally, I think that we are in a great location for a college campus. We are surrounded by a ton of other um, college and universities around the area. So it is a very college town. Um, you'll find a bunch of young professionals, students who are your ages, 
Um, so that's really nice in terms of internship and job opportunities as well, and just meeting people who are the same age as you. Um, we are about five minutes from downtown New Haven, which is a great little city. Um, it has high-end shopping, music halls, art galleries, um, really good pizza places like Modern and, and Pepe's Pizza, if you've heard of them. Um, we are also about five minutes away from West Haven Beach. There's a huge boardwalk on the beach. Um, there are seafood restaurants, um, little ice cream shops. So there's a ton to do there as well. And then we are smack dab in the middle of New York City and Boston. Um, obviously a ton to do in those cities for jobs, internships, and just to go for a fun day as well. At New Haven, we do have about 5,000 full-time undergraduate students. So we are not a tiny school, but we aren't huge in any way either. Um, you will definitely have your close, like tight-knit group of people who you, who you are always with, but you will be meeting new people every single day as well. So at New Haven, we do have an average class size of 22. Um, I was a student at New Haven. I graduated in 2019, and this was definitely something that I loved while being a student there. Um, the class sizes being this small, it makes it, um, makes it a lot easier for you to have a personalized edu education, connect really well with your professor and your classmates. It makes for a much easier learning environment too. So, and then, with that, we do have over 100 majors that we offer to our students. Um, a school of our size rarely has this many programs, so we do like to give our students a ton of options. You know, not a lot of not a lot of people know what they want to do going into college, so um, we do want to give you the option to kind of explore and pick out different majors if you want to do so. And then our 100 majors are housed among five different colleges that we have throughout the university. So the College of Arts and Sciences, um, that is where you'll find our general sciences, our humanities, so like biology, chemistry, communication. Um, then we have our School of Health Sciences. We have our Pompeii College of Business. Um, our College of Business is AACSB accredited. So we are in the top 5% of the world for all business schools. Um, Tagliatella College of Engineering, and then Henry C. Lee College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Science as well. Um, so this is pretty much our success rate. Um, so in 2019, 97% of our students graduated from the University of New Haven and got jobs in the field that they studied six months after graduating, which is pretty much the main goal. Um, that actually goes up to 100% one year after graduation as well. Um, aside from academics, we do have over 200 clubs and organizations on campus. We definitely want students to get involved um, when they come to campus. We have everything you can possibly imagine from major related clubs to club sports. Um, so there is a ton to do. And here's just some pictures of the activities that we have on campus, cheer, dance. We do have Greek life. Um, we have 17 different fraternities and sororities on campus. They work very closely with St. Jude's Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, we do have the largest marching band in the Northeast as well. Um, and we do have a radio station and a huge theater on campus. Um, so study abroad, we do have over 100 different programs that we offer to our students. Um, students are able to travel all over the globe, but we do have a satellite campus in Tuscany, Italy. So it is the University of New Haven just put over in Italy. It is the same cost to go and take classes there as it would be to take classes on our West Haven campus. We are NCAA Division II Athletics. Um, we are in the Northeast 10 Conference, so it is the most competitive conference within Division II. Um, we do have 17 varsity athletic teams. Um, it makes for a ton of school spirit. The teams are really good. Um, so it is fun to go and watch them perform. In terms of scholarships, so we do um, award merit-based scholarships at the time of your acceptance to the University of New Haven. These scholarships range from $10,000 to $26,000. Um, they are based on your academics. So depending on your GPA, your test scores, which we are test optional as well, um, your class rank, you will be given a scholarship based on those things. We also have additional scholarships too. If you wanna be a part of our honors program, um, that's an additional $1,000 scholarship each year. Marching band, our Pompeii College of Business, and then our portfolio is for art students as well. And these are annual scholarships. 
So you'll get them every year. And then here are just some on-campus and virtual visit opportunities that we have coming up at the University of New Haven. Um, we are starting to have a ton of on-campus events um, since things are getting a little bit back to normal. Um, so if you do want to sign up for an event, please do so on our website at newhaven.edu slash visit. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable coming to campus just yet, we do have a ton of virtual events going on as well. And that is about it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Kayla. And we have just a little bit of time left before um, we've reached the end. So I would like to ask all of the, the panelists if they could turn their cameras and microphones back on. And I'm just going to pose uh, a question to each of you. If you could give us an interesting or fun fact about your school, that could be uh, a campus tradition, maybe a bit of history, a famous alumnus, really anything that, that makes uh, your university just a little bit interesting. Let's um, uh, start with the University of South Florida. Hi, again, this is Danielle Castro with the University of South Florida. Um, I would say my favorite tradition is um, Rocky, which is our mascot, Rocky D. Bull. Um, his birthday is in April, so we have a huge birthday bash for him. Um, and so we do a whole slew of activities throughout the week. It entails concerts. We've got usually a football game or some other sporting event going on during that week, as well as we have a bunch of the student organizations that come out and do um, special programs that will coincide with it. So they get to enjoy enjoy and get out on campus and talk with some of the newer students on campus um, and individuals are coming around. But then my favorite part of it is that we do get a big cake for Rocky, which he cuts on his birthday um, during that week, which is really fun. So it's a nice way for the students to get to feel like a more sense of community on campus and get to know more about their mascot as well. Thanks. Christopher from Nova Southeastern. Yeah, my, uh, my favorite tradition on campus is during homecoming week, we have our Anything Floats boat race. Um, and basically what it is, is all the different clubs and organizations um, go all over campus trying to find materials to build rafts to race across the lake on campus um, for the opportunity to win uh, basically some money for the club. Um, it's called the Anything Floats Boat Race, but for the most part, everything sinks. So you have a bunch of students that are trying to get across the lake. Um, last, last year, I saw one of our students just picked up one of those big plastic trash cans and tried to paddle his way across the lake, and it did not go as planned, um, but it was absolutely hilarious to watch. So it's my favorite tradition. Thanks. The University of Tampa. Hi. Uh, for the University of Tampa, the it was founded in 1931, but in 1933 it moved to its current location. Uh, and the building, the the whole university was in one building called Plant Hall. And Plant Hall um, was originally a hotel that was built in the late 1800s. And so it has a Moroccan style um, minuets. And so one of the tradition is that all seniors climb to the very top of the minuet and you can see over the whole downtown area from the minuet. Very cool. Uh, next is Kennesaw State. Phenomenal. So uh, definitely some cool traditions at KSU. Again, we, we, we are a pretty new institution um, founded in 1963 and then became a four-year university in 1996. Uh, but two of my favorite ones and one is on the Marietta campus. I'm the liaison for STEM programs for our engineering students. We have what's called the pumpkin launch where first year mechanical engineering students are gonna go through and they don't know nothing. So they are trying to put together this giant pumpkin launcher and launch the pumpkin as far as they can. And they judge it and they paint the pumpkins. And it actually draws a pretty large crowd in the city of Marietta. So it's something cool. Um, but if you're not interested in STEM side, um, that's just my STEM plug. I love the Kennesaw campus because uh, we do homecoming every year, just like every institution. But I feel like we've had some of the best performers in the last couple of years. So my first year, we had uh, Wiz Khalifa and Ty Dolla Sign, and we had Jeremiah one year. Um, we had Jesse McCartney, and we also and just this past year we had Megan Thee Stallion, which is which is an amazing show. And some cele one celebrity, I'll, you know, cut my time here is uh, Barb from Stranger Things. Yes, Google it. She was doing her. Um, her degree while she was shooting Stranger Things. So 
we got some cool people at KSU. Now, Sacred Heart University. Yeah, so one of my um, favorite traditions, and it kind of happens like beginning, middle, and end of each semester um, as they're kind of welcoming students back from uh, breaks or back to campus after a longer break, um, they'll basically have the marching band kind of process through the entire um, campus and just kind of waking up students, get um, our bagpipes going, or if there's like a big rivalry game, they'll usually process as well through campus. So again, just kind of emulating the ongoing spirit that we do have um, in our community. Great. And the University of New Haven. Sure. So some of my favorite uh, traditions at New Haven is definitely homecoming and spring weekend. Um, those are huge events that we host at the university. We have a ton of performers come um, for spring weekend. We also put a, uh, have a huge carnival up at our North Campus, which is where our, our athletic facilities are. So the carnival is always a hit. Um, we also have a blue football field, which is pretty cool. Um, I believe us and Boise State are the only two schools that have a Royal Blue Turf football field. Um, so there's a ton of school spirit around that. Um, homecoming is also a huge event that we put on too that's a lot of fun for our students. Great, thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for joining us. Thank you so much to our, our panelists this evening. Um, when you close your window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We really appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions that are being hosted. Um, there will be others uh, as part of this call for series over the next couple of months. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as recordings of all the other sessions at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. Thank you so much. Thanks again to the panelists and you all have a great evening. <laughs>